Hey guys, it's Sunday morning. We're glad to see you. Uh, we're doing a little something different. Uh, for years, I've been trying to get her uh, in front of the camera, and finally, she's agreed to do so. We're in lockdown right now, and in just a little bit, we're going to be joining together for our worship service. Uh, but, but, but right now, we just want to kind of talk with you a little bit. This is not really a Sunday school lesson, but um, we just hope that you guys enjoy. So, April, our topic right now is going to be Jonah. You remember Jonah back there in the Old Testament? I do remember that story. That was for Taylor's, our daughter, who's now 20. That was her favorite story when she was little. Like two, I guess, something like that. That yeah. was her favorite story by far. You still have that little puppet that she I used do, to have when you were a kid? I do, I do. I get to use so. it. I may have even used it on one of my little Sunday school videos that I started doing during the coronavirus. And so, But anyway, yeah, she loved that. Yeah, yeah. So really what we're going to talk about today is how Jonah uh, did not want to do what God wanted him to do. It was really simple. God had a plan for Jonah, yet Jonah said, nah, I don't think I want to do that. And he actually went in the opposite direction. April, whenever I think about God's plan for our lives, we could have never scripted this. We could have never scripted where we are right now in our lives. <laughs> no. We would have never dreamed me being a pastor, you being a pastor's wife, us doing something like, like this video right no. here. We would have never dreamed it. So let, let's talk just a little bit today about some of the hesitancy that we see in Jonah. God said, go here and do this. He wanted them to go to the people of Nineveh, preach a message of redemption to them. Now, we know he eventually did that, uh, and they got their hearts right with the Lord, uh, but Jonah really didn't want to do it. And, uh, shipwreck, or not, he was on a ship, and he was thrown overboard, a fish, and uh, you know the whole story of Jonah. April... What was some of the hesitancy about about ministry? Now, I know we're going way back in our minds, like to the year, uh, to the year two thousand. You know, I started to the right. ministry right there around just the almost time twenty that, years ago. That Taylor Taylor was born. Yeah. So yeah. So what what was what was some of the initial hesitancy? Well, when you called and told me that you had surrendered to preach, that was I yeah. think October the ninth of two thousand. And my, I remember it was a corded phone in our bedroom that I had picked up. As yeah, you were some home. Dates that I was, I was at, at home. Yeah. I'd had seizures. Um, so I was still off work and couldn't work. At that time, I wasn't a realtor. I was working at a, um, a drug, drug store. store. And so I was still at home with Tyler because I couldn't drive and all that mess. And so um, anyway, you called and told me that you were trying to preach. Yeah. And my first words out of my mouth, my first thought was, I said it, I said, we're going to starve to death, we're and uh, I wasn't too far off, we almost did a few times, but right. God took care of us, so we never did, obviously, we're still here 20 years later, but um, anyway, but that was my initial first thoughts, and I didn't really know what, well, neither one of us knew what that life would look yeah. like, we weren't, uh, we were really involved in church, but our dads weren't deacons, they weren't preachers, yeah. we didn't have this long genealogy going back of these, um, you know, ministers in our lives and all that kind yeah. of stuff you know but that was you know um god has a different plan for everybody and it doesn't have to be in your you know family tree of to be a pastor you know it's just when yeah. god calls you and your family to that yeah yeah and god called us to it and there was some initial hesitancy really yeah. it was it was of the unknown so whenever i look at jonah i could see him saying, I don't know anything about these people and what historians tell us is what he knew at the end of us. He would not have liked and, and yeah, he, he maybe really didn't, like him anyway. he didn't want him to be redeemed. Like. Yeah, that's right. But for us, it was the it was the unknown. We don't know how to do anything like ministry. No, and we, we just, knew church people and we liked them, unlike yeah. Jonah. Like, yeah, he didn't yeah, like those right. people. We liked church people. Yeah, we still didn't know Yeah, that. and we, we were very involved in yeah. church. It wasn't, it wasn't that we had a disdain for church people. No, we loved church people. No, yeah. It was just, we don't know what we're doing, and yeah. we don't know how to really get into this. Yeah. And uh, and then God began to open doors, open doors of a, of a youth pastor position uh, that I was able to serve in for about four years. It was yeah, at our wasn't, church. Yeah, long and, after David's run to preach, they went into full time ministry. So yeah. so those were really close together, and yeah. uh, it, it felt like shell shock all the way around. But yeah, we had yeah. a new baby and, and yeah. life. <laughs> there was so. a lot going on, and I always thought that I was called to to do to do pastoral ministry. You know, as a senior your pastor. Some guys are called to be associates. Some guys are called to be youth guys. Some guys are called to be whatever. I always thought my calling was to preach. And so in those initial months, I preached a few times and there was an open door to be a youth guy. I was able to be a youth guy. And then and then I was able to preach you know, occasionally at that church, be able to preach in different venues. That was 
was way back when, about 20 years ago, is when I started going to nursing homes and started yeah. uh, preaching weekly in a, in a nursing home. And that's this this coronavirus thing is so weird because it is now been it's been since March since I preached this out of a nursing home or a jail, and this is the longest time since the year 2000. It has been two decades since I have gone this long without preaching in a nursing home, and and it just it just feels weird. It really feels weird. And so we begin to develop ministry then, and then when we were 25 years old, then life changed as God led us away from that youth pastor's position to 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 my first church as pastor. Yeah. Away from our hometown and the only church I had ever known. That's right. So, that's right. It was so a lot different. We moved like 30 miles down the road. Felt like the other side of the world, but it, it wasn't. Did. It did. And we were around some really good people. Our entire ministry, we have been around some really good people. We have been extremely blessed by that. And then we had to kind of fill out the pastorate. The pastorate is different from being a youth guy. A youth guy is a totally different ministry than, than being behind a pulpit Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and being the pastor. And so we kind of had to had to fill out that role. Now, in your life, did your life change whenever I became a pastor and you became a pastor's wife? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was still... I, I know a lot of preacher's wives, pastor's wives, minister's wives take... Um, different approaches to how they sure. do that but I've always been fully in fully on board and at the time that he started doing the youth pastor thing and was in full-time ministry I started staying home with our daughter so I was really involved and I didn't work again until she was 13 and so That's and right. I'm still really involved obviously I'm on this video <laughs> so but um you know like it, it was just it was different and and it went from being in a fishbowl because he was the youth minister to being in like felt like the only one in the aquarium that everybody was staring at. And that's kind of what you feel that's like, really especially when you have a child yeah. and with a preacher's family. Yeah, our daughter was like. Even though our daughter has been no complaints, we, and we can never complain. Thank the Lord for that. Yeah, but, um, yeah. It's, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're the only fish in there and everybody's looking at you. Yeah, yeah, you know? that, that's right, that's right. And so we've had some yeah. some interesting times down through the years. We've had ups and downs. Being a pastor and a pastor's wife is not a bed of roses all the time. Now, we would I would say most of the time it is. We have been so blessed. But there have been some, some low points in ministry that God has used in our lives to help make us more into his image. And, and hey, we are who we are because of those good times because of those bad times. And we found out during the bad times that God is still good and 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 there's church is still full of people and so sometimes at church there's some bad people that, you know, are not following God, don't that have not actually professed Christ, even though they, they claim they have, that's probably the issue going on. And so but during that we found out that we were we were okay because God still took yeah, care of us. Always taking care know. of us. We've been, been fine. It's been really good. Yeah. Now, now, if this is what I want to ask you, during this coronavirus time, um, our roles have shifted. We spent about, I don't know, eight or nine weeks back in middle of March, April, May. Uh, we have spent a lot of time. When our dog overlooking. Or when our puppy dog. We spent a lot of time in lockdown, and ah. we had to learn a whole new system. Uh, you had to learn how to do the technological ah. side. We changed everything at our, at our church, computer-wise, video-wise. And you had to learn that, and now, now we're in a we're in a lockdown again. Hopefully, this is going to end. This lockdown is going to end in about nine days. That's what we're looking forward to right now. Uh, but but during this time, we've had to kind of shift our roles, and and you started doing some children's videos that really you had never done before. So kind of kind of tell us tell us a little bit about that. I've never done anything that I've done during the coronavirus before. I don't think um, I've always been open to helping at church and all kinds of different ways and capacities. I know some people say, well, I'm, I'm only going to work with the women of the church and that's what God wants me to do. And I feel like that I have been um, been able to be used in lots of different ways over the years, being flexible, I've taught. Um, especially when I was in my early 20s, I was teaching senior adult ladies. I've been over the WMU. I've taught the little bitty kids. I've taught the middle-aged kids. I've helped with teenagers. Yeah. And uh, all kinds of stuff. But uh, I never I always said I wasn't a tech person. I'm definitely, I, one thing I will not do is be singing solos. I can, I can for sure put that on the list, but of no. Maybe but, solo, we can't hear you. <laughs> maybe, yeah, something. Wah, wah, wah. But anyway, maybe something like that. But I never thought I would be doing anything 
takey because I'm not takey and the stuff that we've done at church to get us up to par on technology and stuff has been a learning curve and we've had other people that have set that up and showed me what to do obviously because I didn't know what I was doing but um but it's definitely been different and then videoing yourself recording a video I used to when I first when David first started in uh -huh ministry like I couldn't stand for anybody to hear me teaching which yeah. was an issue when you're teaching especially adults yeah. and that was you know but um it, anyway it was just it's it's one thing to teach kids and then somebody else listen to you teach kids because you you know to a, another grown up sometimes you can sound um goofy and and silly and overly simplifying stuff which is what Jesus did in the New Testament with the parables he put it on a level that anybody can understand so um but anyway, I was really self-conscious about that. Over the years, I've gotten better and better and better. And then, obviously, with the video in yourself, you have to um, get used to that and comfortable with that because that was a new experience that yeah. we've done during the coronavirus. Yeah, because on video, nobody so. ever sounds right. Who do you think you sound like whenever you listen to yourself on video? Uh, hillbilly. Uh, I know hillbilly. what I sound like. Reba which I probably, I, everybody <laughs> that, if anybody listens to this, is probably like, yeah, that's what you sound like all the time anyway. So, uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, I sound like I am a hillbilly from Mississippi. But, um, but you know, it's probably pretty accurate because I am a that's, hillbilly and I am from Mississippi. That's so. right. That's right. Anyway. Yeah, that's spot on. So, yeah. So, so Jonah had to go through a lot of adjustment of, of, of understanding what God's will was for him at that time and then really him submitting his will to the will of the Lord and I think we've had to do that a lot um, we prefer ministry other than lockdown ministry we would rather be doing other stuff I would rather our choir be behind me on Sunday morning like they have been for five years at Trinity I'd prefer you to be in that choir like you've always been in the choir until this lockdown time came I would prefer us to be doing other stuff and honestly those of you who are watching this video uh, if you're a member of Trinity Baptist Church, you're not going to be at church in just a little bit. You're going to be at home watching videos like this and then worship service here in just a minute. And you would prefer to be at church. But strange times. And so I guess we just roll with it and we acknowledge, okay, God, you must have a plan for us during this time and we're to just be faithful to And what him. we've learned is that during this and this weird, crazy circumstances that we're living through is that even though we're doing ministry different ministry can still happen and just in a different way you just have to be able to be flexible and do what God wants you to do um, just like Jonah didn't want to I mean I didn't want to become the videographer for Trinity by no stretch or the official you know uh, children's Sunday school person I'm like I don't know how all that happened but yeah. um, I'd much rather be doing something else like maybe shopping yeah. of course it's not an yeah. option now either so anyway but um, um, yeah. You know, you just have to learn to roll with what God sends your way and, and something, do it. Something and is better than nothing. Doing something for the Lord is better than doing nothing that's for the great. Lord. And we can all do something. Everybody that's right. Something. Yeah, you yeah. heard it first from the preacher's <laughs> wife. So, yeah. Anyway. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And April, oh, thank you for joining us. Man, I look a, I look a lot worse whenever you're standing next to me because you're so pretty. But it is, it is so good to have you guys Thanks, joining us today. And uh, tune in in just a little bit as we'll be going live with our worship service.